Call this meeting to order of the Fitchburg School Committee. Committee meeting tonight on June 21st, 2021, here in the Legislative Building. And I'm gonna call on Ms. Tara uh, O'Brien. Sweeney. I'm, uh, Sweeney, excuse me. That's right. Yeah, oh, it's up. Now you're with this guy. I mean, it's a, yeah, Sweeney. That's right. Yeah, that's right. F Phil and him, they're both the same height. That's why I confused them. All right. Order, salute to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United and States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. School committee chair report. I have nothing to report at this time. Resource committee. Resource committee. Uh, we met the other day, and we had, uh, we approved our minutes of May 13th. Uh, we had grants to submit, um, accelerated math grant, federal grant programs, um, and uh, we had some to accept. The grants that were uh, 21, 21st Century Community Learning Center, Title I, Title IIA, Title III, Title IV, 21st Century Public Law 94-142, Special Education Early Childhood Grant, and the Perkins Grant, those were all submitted and they will be on the agenda tonight. Um, one of the grants, the 21st Century at McKay. Um, is that the first time McKay has the 21st Century? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's for $155,000 uh, that's been awarded. And we have donations to accept. Uh, uh, Walmart uh, hand sanitizer and we also discussed the June 13th holiday. That's it for the resource. Okay, school building needs, Mr. School, uh, school building Stevens. needs, yep. we also, uh, we met uh, the other day. Uh, Mr. Shalafu gave us a, an update <clears throat> on all of the uh, summer projects that are going to take place. Uh, he talked about the HERA management update in the upcoming projects uh, and priorities over the summer. One of the, some of the projects are, uh, the playgrounds are going to be uh, looked at and taken care of uh, over the summer. Um, Crocker Field restoration, the Gadsby has finalized for this season the uh, fertilizing for Crocker Field. Uh, the artificial turf project, uh, we have submitted the grant to the NFL. Um, hopefully that will go. MSBA Crocker Core project, uh, they're, they're meeting Wednesday morning on Crocker Elementary School, the uh, MSBA to vote. Uh, hopefully they'll accept our program. Uh, we've had, we had talked about accelerated repairs in the statement of interest on um, windows and boilers. Uh, the MSBA accelerated repair, repairs of South Street, uh, the boiler project is complete, and South Street roof update. Uh, we also um, had in attendance Mr. Pellin, Mr. Sweeney, and Mr. O'Brien, who made a presentation on the uh, softball field at Fitchburg High School, of which that is part of our, on our agenda tonight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any questions from the committee? Comments, concerns? Seeing none. Policy committee, Mr. Horgan. Nothing new to report at this time. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, Student Support Committee. Nothing new to report. Any questions, con comments, or concerns? Seeing none, School Personnel Committee. I have nothing to report at this time. Executive Committee, none, nothing at this time as well. Do we have student reps or they're out for the summer, right? They're out for okay. the summer. Yeah. Okay, great. Approval of the minutes from the previous School Committee meeting of June 7, 2021. Make a motion. 
Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, it is unanimous. Thank you. Executive session not at this time. Any communications? Yes. Ms. Cragen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, that's good acoustics. So I've got, a, I've got a few communications. The first is that Footsteps to Brilliance, which has been a really integral part of Fitchburg Public Schools literacy advocacy, particularly for English language learners, is partnering with Swan Hope Press. Now that is the small micro press devoted to local work that I do with Catherine Swante, um, an artist. We had an amazing book event at McKay last week and we were very happy to have the mayor be present because we have published books by the kids who have been doing the program on the computers. So what kids do is they, you know, they, uh, they grab a picture, they, they work with the picture, but then they write, and they write in English. These are finished, completed books, thanks to Minuteman Press for publishing. We had their teacher, Ms. Rosa, who really helped facilitate, and we've published three this spring. We plan to do another three this fall. And I'm really proud um, of the work that these kids did, working with Kathy Brady, who's an absolute dream. I'm gonna pass these books down this way so school committee members can see them. Um, the other piece is that uh, this Saturday, we do have a pet vaccine and microchip clinic coming up at Fitchburg Fire Department. Uh, that is Saturday, June 26th, 9 to 12. There are a ton of spots available, and um, I will be putting flyers down at Market Basket, and we're trying to get it out on social media, but it's really important that pet owners please vaccinate. This is a $15 rabies shots for cats and dogs, $15 distemper parvo cat, um, for dogs, and $20 microchips, so much more economical. Uh, there's no vet fee involved, just uh, make a reservation with Second Chance animal services and that would be excellent now my driver is ready um, this is the week that goats came to Rheingold school so some of you may have heard this we kept it really within the school community and I was really thrilled that Central Mass Goat Rental was willing to uh, work with us and they brought seven goats to Rheingold so this was a collaboration with Be Positive Therapy Pets and of course Fitchburg Public Schools so the first thing I did was to make an informational sign so we put this up. Uh, Tammy, the owner of Central Mass Goat Rental, put out probably 500 feet of electrified fence to keep the goats safe, to keep the kids safe. The aim of the goats was that they'd be eating the weeds and the kids would see them. This is a pilot program. But we also did a contest. So uh, children of all grades could write a story, could do a picture, and the winner of each grade would get a free hike with the goats for a, a family four pack. Very exciting. So next slide. Here they are, parent drop-off was Sunday night. <laughs> they ate all those weeds and a lot more. So you can see why- really? Oh they, yes. They wiped them out? They, they, wow. they were incredible. I and they worked it. during the night too. So oh, the, yeah. the goat in the foreground, the really handsome white goat <laughs> with the curved horns, that's Noah. And he really was the fan favorite of the kids. But there were three separate breeds and um, I think the next slide has everyone who came meet the goats. So we had a Nubian goat, and he was, Baby was the youngest. He was, the kids loved watching him because he would put his head down, he would want to play, and he also stood up on his hind legs to eat low-hanging leaves because goats are browsers. They want to be up to get leaves. Sheep are the ones that really go right down to the ground. Then the two alpine goats, so there's Janet and Chrissy. Um, there was a Jack named after three, Three's Company, but he's gone to the Rainbow Bridge of Goats. Um, <laughs> the alpine goats were really, really very elegant, and they really <laughs> behaved well, um, everyone observed, that they weren't, they weren't pushy and they really stuck together. The next slide will show the Nigerian dwarf goats. So as you can see, um, they all looked really different. So kids asked questions. Well, they assumed that the females didn't have horns and the males did. So they were able to learn a lot about the species. And um, also, they, they were really good about identifying them. We did this piece as a handout um, during the program. So kid, um, it's actually, I, pu I put things in, um, in plastic sleeves. They were kept in a bucket underneath that sign. So these were all our goats. They were, um, they were incredibly hardworking, every single one. Uh, next slide. Chrissy, that face. 
the goats would pause, and kids really could observe. They could observe them interacting with each other. They could observe them you know, in the herbage. They could observe them sleeping. They could observe them looking back. Um, yeah, I see, look at all the smiles on the school committee. How nice is that? <laughs> uh, next slide. So Tammy Hebert of Central Mass Goat Rental visited several times and spoke to students. So here are some fourth graders who were learning about the goats. Uh, we did ask kids to stay, you know, uh, several paces away from the fence. Everyone complied. Everyone was very, very good. And Tammy was an excellent instructor. And we, um, we, she had a great rapport with the kids. So next slide. Lots of questions and curiosity. We um, would have groups come out mostly like uh, um, around recess, around lunchtime, but we also had teachers. This was the last week of school. So these guys had basically a field trip happening every day at their school for the entire last week of school. Kids ran to where the goats were, and they pointed and they said, oh, look, I can see Baby, I can see Noah. Like they really interacted. Uh, next slide. So the contest winners. So um, I'm gonna show you kindergarten and fourth grade. So this was a kindergarten winner. This one won, this was Cameron. So he really paid attention to colors. He paid attention to the, sh the color of the goats, the horns, the ears, and also that they were on grass, and he's showing the tent over there as well. So we, this was chosen. Um, we had several people help out, and a huge thanks to Lori Stone, Mr. Mercado, and Mr. Sparks for you know, all the administration they did for this project. And then the next one is, um, fourth grade, so Sahara, fourth grader won, because she wrote a first person monologue, well, first goat monologue, from the perspective of the goats, and it was about what do the goats think when they see all these kids coming, and how do they interact with each other? So knowing the names of the goats gave these kids really a kind of a leg up into observation. They could see that Baby was a little frisky. They could also see that Moose liked to you know, be by himself, like he would separate himself from the herd and go sleep at a distance. Uh, next slide. So Sahara also did a, uh, a picture. She, again, she captured what the goats looked like in terms of coloring. She detailed all of her you know, elements in the drawing. This is very scientific because it, it shows all the different you know, attributes. And again, it was a very, very hot and sunny um, week at school. Uh, next slide, which I think might be... Yeah, so um, having just talked to Tess Mayer and, and her work with our new teachers, she told them, well, don't be afraid to talk about the academics. And I remembered that, and I thought you would want to know this. So more than 130 students entered the contest from some nearly 450 who were in school. Now, most classes did visit every day, and it usually was around recess, but we also had um, neighborhood families visiting after hours. I know we had remote students visiting because they told me. I was there pretty much every day after school, um, right into dusk, because I enjoyed spending time with them. Um, and there were always families coming and a lot of kids. So the students got excited and they asked a lot of questions. This is what teachers told me. A lot of kids have never seen a live animal. Every teacher told me that, in fact. Some teachers said more than half my class has never seen a live animal. So a second grade teacher said we had just done a magic science se section, then we watched videos of baby goats, so the kids knew they were mammals, had hair, gave milk, and had live birth. Now, the four a fourth grade teacher said a lot of kids didn't have this background knowledge. They were curious and wanted to learn more. So this was, and I'm reaching out to a lot of other teachers as well. My plan is to apply for some funding so that we get to do this again for our elementaries. But this was an extraordinary experience. And uh, one of the teachers also said, you know, when we came back, kids were asking me, are we going to have a field trip? And I had to say, no, but this has been great. You know, this has been great. Because this was the field trip that came to them. So I've got some of my handouts, um, the, um, the flyer about what the project was, a flyer I, sent to, I gave to teachers, um, kind of a knowledge sheet that teachers got to look at to understand the different species, the, I mean, sorry, the different breeds of goats, so they could answer questions, um, as well as, of course, the, um, you know, the, the baseball cards of each, each goat. So that was information that was shared, and Tammy Hebert was just a dream to work with. So. <coughs> Any, if any viewer is looking to rent goats to clear their weeds, Central Mass Goat Rental. Nicely done. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Any, any questions about this project? Or I know we had some visitors from, from school committee and from administration. 
You guys have any thoughts on? Well, so I, uh, Mr. Jokler and I stopped by on Friday, the last day, and uh, we were actually there um, when the students were coming down to the lobby at Ryan Gold to celebrate the you know final hours of the of the goats and um, I was actually got a second to read some of the kids writing and you know a lot of them chose the perspective of the goat and it was just nice to see um, you know just nice to read what they wrote and how you know they really had a lot of details in there about what they thought they what the how the goat was feeling what they saw um, reacting to the kids looking at them um, it was it was it was great it was a great event so thank you Sally. Thank you. It was my pleasure to do this, and um, you know, again, to end a year <coughs> with a bunch of goats at Rheingold, uh, <laughs> that was great. So thank, thank you for the support, everyone, and we're going to try to make this happen again. Great. Thank, so thank you, Mr. Superintendent. I, I think this is your way of subtly trying to say we need to have an agricultural high school in this part of Pittsburgh <laughs> Public Schools as well. So I, we'll talk I, about that next year. We can talk about that next year when the time comes. Yes, I think that's something to explore. Great. Uh, May I make yes. I can read yeah. under communications. Uh, yep. Yep. Tony Alario softball. Mm. Sure. Broadway receipt. Yep. Members of the Fitchburg School Committee, before you tonight is a proposal which would name the softball soccer field at Fitchburg High School after the late Tony Alario, a legendary coach from Fitchburg High School. As the athletic historian of Fitchburg High School, I tell you unequivocally that the honor is well deserved and is a pre appropriate measure to take for someone who has a great impact on the lives of many Fitchburg High School student athletes. A 1962 graduate of Fitchburg High School, Coach Ilario gave back to his community and most especially his alma mater in a variety of ways. He was a teacher at both Fitchburg High School as well at B.F. Brown and will forever be remembered as a coach to many young men and women who proudly wore the red and gray. According to his Hall of Fame induction, Coach Ilario was a member of our fourth induction class in 2009. He won nearly 500 games as both the girls' varsity basketball coach. He had taken the job in 1979 after moving up from coaching the BF Brown boys team. Those BF Brown players would help Doug Rutchfield win several mass, Central Mass titles in the early to mid-1980s, as well as the girls' varsity softball coach. Our late historian Fred Sullivan wrote that he was considered a better softball coach than basketball coach. That is true. While Coach Hilario helped lead the Red Raider girl cages to one Central Mass championship and two final appearances, his softball teams were always the ones of the top teams in the not only Midwatch A, but also the Central Mass Division I in softball. He was the Raiders bench coach boss for five trips to the Central Mass title game in June. While Coach Hilario retired in 2002 without a Central Mass title in softball, Fitchburg won the title two years later. The coach of that team, Tim O'Brien, would look each of you in the eye and tell you that the building blocks of that title winning team, which we inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2015, came through Coach Hilario's tutelage. In all, Coach Hilario coached for 35 years, becoming the softball coach in 1974 after Title IX came into effect along with the Hall of Fame. He is also in the Mass State Softball and Basketball Coaches Hall of Fame. Of the 18 individual members currently enshrined in the Hall of Fame, Coach Hilario coached 10 of them on the softball team. Pam Briggs, Paula Goodchild, Tara Sweeney, Tracy Smith, Sarah Thomas, Karen Lafrenia, Shelley Richard, Beth Richard, Megan Nomenden, and Courtney Jacobs. Naming the field at the Coach Hilario would not set a precedent as several of the fields are aptly named after the Red Raider coaches. Our football practice field is named after the legendary Clarence and Amiot, who graduated from FHS in 1910 and would be our first great coach and who led the famous Red and Gray to six Central Mass Boys basketball championships. Both men, like Coach Hilario and Dink are inducted into our Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, like fitting honor and a lasting legacy to a man who gave a great deal of time to Fitchburg High School athletics. Uh, this was uh, submitted by Mr. Sean Sweeney. Uh, well done. Thank you. Coach O'Brien, thank you as well. Uh, quite a, 
<clears throat> quite a history of success at the, at the high school softball level. And uh, I know Mr. Pellin has been involved in city sports for longer than, than I will admit, but uh, thank you, Mike, as well. Appreciate it. Any questions? Comments? Would you like to take the or, um, action item? Yeah, you want to take this now? Yeah. yeah. All right, we're going to take up action item 21-81. Approve the recommendation and name the Fitchburg High School softball soccer field after former coach and teacher Anthony Tony Olario. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept 21-81. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed, it is unanimous. Thank you. Congratulations to the Ilario family and to you coaches as well. And thank you, uh, Madam Sweeney. Thanks. Okay. Next. Uh, Actually, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Did, did, did any of you want to say anything? What? Yeah. Yeah. You wanna... I was going to ask Sally if we could include those votes. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, I want to know. You know well, I want to get the sheep because I need somebody to cut my lawn. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say thank you to you all because uh, this is uh, very meaningful to me having a coach with Tony and knowing what he did, not only at Fitchburg High School, but for the city of Fitchburg. And I think that somebody like Tara Sweeney showing up here tonight speaks volumes to that element alone, just how much Tony meant. And uh, I want to thank her for that, taking her time to come in, and Mike, and Sean Sweeney, and all of you, really, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much, because this is very meaningful. Folks, uh, you know, I, 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 something just came to mind. Are we, are we planning on any kind of signage that's going to uh, prominently show the name of the field? You are. All right. Well, we'll help out if you need it, need any help. I mean, that's what we need to uh, prominently display the name of the field. And, and let us know when, I don't know if, if unveiling is the right term. Yeah, that's right. Nice to be there yeah. when. Yeah. Good. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Since Tara is here, Tara, do you have a, any fond memory you want to share? You know, in preparation, thank you, first of all. So I'm Tara Sweeney, for those of you who haven't had the pleasure of meeting, and I graduated from Fisher High School in 1991. Um, there's so much you can, I can talk to you about Coach Olario, but I, I think I want to highlight two things that show the pride that we all have in him. And that's the first one is he always took young girls and he made us confident and capable women. And he sent us out into the world after graduation ready to take it on because he helped us find our voices and be good teammates and be able to go off and take on what was to come next. And the second part is evident by the Facebook threads and families of circles of networks that I have on, on my page, is that he took all of his girls and he made us sisters. And that's a family that we still nurture today. Especially with the loss of Paul Bichard recently. With Coach, with Coach Brazili, with other teammates like Diana Bella Barbara of my time, it's just spectacular that these girls who formed friendships on a court and did our best, and boy, were we always disappointed that we couldn't take his great coaching and turn that into a softball win for him. But to be always a family, first and foremost, has been really spectacular. So I thank Coach Paula and Coach Brian for welcoming me into this important moment. And I'm just so proud of all of you for honoring this truly remarkable man in our lives. So thank you. done tonight is recognize the first female coach in Fishbrook High history to have a field named after them. Um, I spoke with Mr. Stevens during the week last week and I said a lot of people don't realize what Tony Lario was all about. In 1997 I was serving as assistant principal of Fitchburg High when Doug Rutchfield, Tony and myself sat down and Tony designed this field. He had only so much room to place it in the corner where the property stands today, and he built it so that the home dugout would adjoin batting cages for the players. Nobody had that at that time. So he, did, he developed the whole outfield, the infield composite, 
Uh, he was more than just a softball coach. Very talented. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collins. I just wanted to add, yes. so I was second baseman for Tony and guard um, for basketball, not point guard. I lost that to Kelly Rice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as you ticked off some of those names, I, I played with all of them. I am not in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> but I played with a lot of those girls. And I think you're right, Tara. I mean, I think he had high expectations um, and he was tough. Uh, he definitely made you rise to those expectations. Um, and we were always a contender. Um, you know, you mentioned the other day, Mike, you mentioned St. Peter Marion, and I was like, oh, St. Peter Marion. Um, <laughs> but you're right, they always had that pitcher. They always had that really fast pitcher. Um, so I, I'm happy that we're honoring his legacy. Um, I actually hadn't known that he was the one to design that field because we played back at BF Brown, right? Like um, on that dirt field, and it drove him crazy. <laughs> high school campus. Yeah, that's great. And he played at Little Playground and Coolidge Park and Pinkett's Field, among other spots. He brought the game to the high school campus. My, my daughter played for him for four years, and my niece Megan played for him for four years. So we're, and he worked. We worked together at the high school in BF Brown, so I'm just very honored to say Tony was a friend of mine. Thanks again, folks. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on the agenda, uh, public comment. Is anyone uh, prepared for public comment? No, none, Mr. Superintendent. Oh, so we'll move into Superintendent's report. Mr. Jokler. All right, uh, Mr. Thompson is going to bring up a uh, Brief summary of uh, the summer programming that we're not able to share. We're not able to share. We're Can asking I have sharing rights, please? <laughs> <laughs> Out there in Zoom land. Can I ask for public comment if I want to bring oh. Andrew? Because Sally has really inspired me to offer something. You don't, you don't want to take that mask down? I can take that mask yeah, down. But, yeah. uh, sorry, I just flew in from yeah, that's all right. Texas. All right. We trust I you. want to be a respectful of Tara. You should do what's comfortable. <laughs> Mr. Rockwell, I had not, have not had a chance to, to know you very well, but um, Andre Ravenel had identified me as one of the founding STEM mentors for the school system. And so prior to COVID, I used to come back and speak to all grade levels um, and just talk to them about the importance of STEM and all the disciplines that make space flight possible. So I'm still an aspiring space explorer, even though I'm now 48 years old, but I'm still doing it. So it's still very important to me. And Sally, you inspired me because all these drawings are really spectacular. And I'm affiliated with a commercial space exploration company called Blue Origin. And they have an incredible nonprofit called Club for the Future. And what Club for the Future does, at no cost to us, is to fly student postcards that they've written out and drawn on, and they send them to space, and they return to Earth about 11 minutes later, and then they send it back to the school district and to the kids. And they just started doing this within the past year or so. So this is my first opportunity to bring this to all of you. <laughs> and you inspired me, Sally, so thank you. But I think it would be, I would love to have your support. Yes. It's as simple as printing out a piece of paper, cutting it into a four by six-ish postcard, and then we would collect them all, get them to Club for the Future, they fly them on an upcoming mission, which happens about every quarter, and then they get sent back to them, and then every child in our city could have something that's been to space and back, and yes. something that's... Shall we paint again? No. Great, Sally! <laughs> to me sooner than later. Yeah. We're running a six-week summer program. Yes. yes. And this would be yeah. a great activity Great, for great idea. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I can have it to sell it yeah. Great, perfect. And uh, I'll get that done. if I can be helpful during your summer program, I'm here until next Thursday. Oh, you so. are. Great. And, and, and here, just to emphasize the importance of STEM, the district will be hiring its first STEM curriculum director in a very short order. So uh, we recognize how important it is. So yeah, we want we want dreams to take flight here. So Thank congratulations you. to you. This is the school system who has fueled mine. So um, Thank you. I'm so proud of you for doing that. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Quick question. Um, so I love the idea of postcards into space. 
um, but poems into space as well. Yes. Like if they did a poem on a postcard and then their poem could go to space, a poem they about- a picture. Yes. Is yeah. equally um, important to those of us in this community. And so in addition to that, Sally, I'm on the board of directors for another organization, nonprofit called Higher Orbits. And they actually do a STEAM specific initiative where you can compete to have your artistry of whatever you call it flown to space. I, I'm, I, I love higher orbits. Um, my son did the program at Boys and Girls Club. This is really exciting, Mr. Mayor. Good. This is awesome. Thank and, you. Uh, camp, summer camp starts next Monday, is that correct? That's correct. You'll be here. <laughs> Thank you. Tara, you were, you were here, what, maybe three or four years ago, was it? Uh, at, at, at Boys and Girls Club? Yes. Right, yes. right. Yeah. Bring yeah. higher orbits uh, to the Pittsburgh Motor right. right. community. Thank you. It was great. And I, I just happen to now serve on the board of that organization, and I lead our diversity and inclusion initiatives. Okay. So. Hey, thank you. Great. That's great. Thank okay. you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, superintendent's report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We'd first like to just recognize the teachers who have retired during the school year. Um, Thanks, guys. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye -bye. Mr. Thompson and I had the pleasure of going out on the last day and visiting with the, the teachers uh, and giving them a, a bouquet of flowers and just as a small token of our appreciation of their dedication and service to the children of Fitchburg. So. Quickly, just to uh, go through the names of teachers by school, at Crocker, we had Andrea Olette, Kimberly Huff, Reingold, Lee Cormier, and Elizabeth Salamito, South Street, Laura Forsman, Longs Joe, Gail Smookler, Elena Ushakova, Michelle Wright, Memorial Sue Terigny, and Carol Miller, and at Fitchburg High, we had Kim O'Neill, Joan Kerr, John O'Neill, and our assistant principal who retired, Tom DiGeronimo. So. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yep. Sue Terigny is retired. <laughs> Sue Terigny, I never thought she'd retire. I yes. thought she'd be. I you know, I her. Her. Well, that's what I was going to say, but she's been around forever. Oh my <laughs> yeah, God, that's her. great. <laughs> And I want to thank Sue, actually, uh, Mr. Uh, Di Natale. Um, I'm going to be talking about the summer uh, program in a minute. Yeah. Um, but Sue Turigny has been very instrumental in summer programming yeah. here in Fitchburg, yeah. in addition to uh, bringing the 21st Century grant back to Fitchburg after several years right. that we lost the grant. Um, so I, I want to say thank you to Sue Turigny for all the work that she's done with the program. Yeah. Um, she's going to be missed and big yeah. shoes to fill. So thank you. Can I add a thank you there? Because so many of those teachers taught one of my, at least one of my girls. Um, as I heard the name Lee Cormier, I just, oh, Lee Cormier. I <laughs> just remember um, how happy I was when our kids started in the Fitchburg Public Schools. And, you know, there were, I, I remember times where I'd be at, games or um, programs with other parents and people would say to me, you're going to send your children to Fitchburg schools? Like, yeah, I'm going to send my kids to Fitchburg public schools. And um, they, were, they were shocked, you know, because some of those people were choicing their children out of the district. And um, we encountered just the most loving, wonderful educators in the city of Fitchburg, and that, went, and as you said, the names, you know, Kim and John O'Neill and Joan Kerr, and obviously Sue Trigny, and of course uh, Tom DiGeronimo. I mean, and I feel badly I'm not mentioning all the other names because those were the ones that just I know personally that um, just at different points in my children's lives have in, have enriched them beyond and, and kept them safe or protected them or advocated for them, and um, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna get like emotional just because these people are, they, you know, they've formed my children's characters. So thank you so much. Well said. Okay. Uh, yep. okay. I think getting back to um, the agenda, next item we have up on is the summer program that we have planned starting uh, Next week. Next Monday. No, actually, a week from Monday. No, no next Monday. Monday. Next week, June and, 28th. And this year we have a uh, record number of uh, participants in the summer program. And uh, not to steal John's thunder, so 
take it away. Yes, thank you. Uh, so this evening, uh, Eva and I would like to share with you um, an update on what our summer program uh, is going to look like. Uh, Eva, are you there? I'm here. All right. I'm here. So we're going to begin. Uh, so we're very excited uh, to be able to offer a sixth week summer program from June 28th to August 6th this year. Um, hours of operation will be Monday through Friday this year, 8.30 to 4 o'clock. Uh, the district in, um, you know, really saw a need after uh, COVID uh, that we needed to provide some type of all day programming for our students. Um, so uh, we were able to um, put together this program. So we're going to be offering three locations. Um, South Street will host our elementary grades, uh, kindergarten to fourth grade. Middle school will be ho um, hosted at Memorial for grades five to eight, and the high school will offer grades uh, nine to 12. Um, there'll be some other specialized programming happening at McKay and Goodrich. Um, so we do have a lot of summer programming happening at different locations throughout the uh, city. Um, really great this year, we were able to provide transportation to all students. Um, we are able to also provide breakfast and lunch to all students at no charge this year, um, and transportation is at no charge. There is no charge to the summer program this year, which is really great for our families. Um, we also, um, sorry about that, uh, we're focusing on this year is going to be academic acceleration in addition to enrichment. So it's not going to be just academics or enrichment this year, we're going to do a combination of both. Um, what it looks like right now is the morning piece is going to be the academic acceleration piece and then the afternoon we're going to be offering enrichment and I'll talk to you a little bit about the programming that we have um, planned for each of the um, schools and um, grade levels. Uh, we're very happy to report that we have um, several community partners that will be helping us uh, this summer. We have the YMCA, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, and the Fitchburg Art Museum. They all have a part of the summer program, so I just want to thank them uh, for all their help um, in planning and making the summer happen. Um, again, like I said, uh, this is free summer programming for all students. Um, and hot off the press, uh, we received word uh, this um, or early late last week that masks um, indoors and maintaining other health and safety guidance is not required, but is encouraged. So our recommendation for this summer will be that masks will be optional for students and staff. They can wear them if they would like, but they will not be required. Um, one other thing I just wanted to say, I just wanted to thank all our teachers um, and paraprofessionals and staff throughout our buildings. Um, talking to other superintendents and assistant superintendents, a lot of them were able to offer summer programs this year because they couldn't find the staff. Um, our, our staff, we have over 55 staff that have signed up, um, uh, probably a little bit more, probably close to 75 staff uh, that uh, are willing to work this summer. So that's a big, um, um, you know, area that I wanted to recognize. A lot of school districts, like I said, are not able to, to find staff and we were able to actually run this summer program because of our teachers. So thank you to all of them. <clears throat> so just going in um, to what the summer program will look like at the elementary level, um, we have co two coordinators for our summer program, uh, Kelly Morrison and Marcus Kitchen. Uh, Kelly Morrison is a Cro uh, Crocker Title I teacher and Marcus Kitchen is a third grade uh, teacher at South Street. They will be our coordinators for the program. They'll be responsible for all the um, elementary uh, programming. So currently we have 410 <coughs> students. Um, enrolled in the summer program. Um, so uh, like I said, in the morning we'll be focusing on academics. Um, for English language arts, we'll be looking at those foundational skills for students, the phonemic awareness and phonics. Uh, students will be um, reading a book uh, with their teacher and doing some type of writing follow-up um, from that read, um, reading. Um, and then in math, they'll be focusing on number sense, learning about place value, learning about um, you know, just the whole idea of numbers and how they grow up. So that will be their focus in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we have several fun enrichment activities planned. Uh, there's some STEM and engineering activities. We have an art um, activities. Fitchburg Art Museum is coming um, in to actually do art activities with our students two days a week at the elementary level. In addition, we also will be having field trips to the art museum uh, for our students. 
Uh, we're also working with the Fitchburg Art Museum to offer art therapy for some of our students. Uh, we're also uh, looking at programming um, around cultures called Around the World and All About Space. So those are just a few samples of what our enrichment activities uh, will look like. And then field trips. So we're really um, focusing on offering one field trip this year. We really think it's important uh, to get back kids back out there and in the community and surrounding communities. So some of the field trips that we have planned right now are the Franklin Park Zoo, uh, the Worcester Red Sox, which I think all programs will be going on July 28th through the Worcester Red Sox, uh, Canopy Lake Park, and Discovery Museum in Acton, and also Camp Lowe. I really want to say thank you to the YMCA in Camp Lowe. Um, we are able to bring um, our elementary students to Camp Lowe um, every afternoon. And we're able to offer swimming and activities there and also some swimming lessons too for students. So that's happening every afternoon, Monday through Friday. I think fourth grade will start on Monday and then we'll end on Friday with kindergarten. So every afternoon, um, kids will be at Camp Low Swimming. Um, and that is just a quick sample schedule of uh, kind of the breakup of the day and what it will look like. And then going into our middle school program, um, our coordinators for this um, middle school program are Jen Fisher, principal at, um, Long, uh, assistant principal at Longstro, Sue D. Geronimo, uh, who is a science teacher, um, at Memorial and also Carrie Boyden, who's also a science teacher at um, Memorial. Um, right now we have 210 students uh, who signed up for the uh, middle school program. Our field trips at the middle school program include uh, hiking Wachusett Mountain, and going down to Apex Entertainment, uh, breezy water slides, um, which I think is in Dudley Mass, I think, down there. Um, Canopy Lake Park, Worcester Red Sox, Kimball Farm, and Mirror Lake. So unfortunately, the uh, Camp Low could not accommodate all our students for swimming. So we actually will, bring in, will be bringing our uh, middle school students to Mirror Lake in Devons, uh, swimming uh, two days a week uh, for students. Um, and there will also be swimming lessons uh, available there for students also. Um, so some of the activities that we have planned, um, uh, we have a program um, which uh, will be bringing students up to uh, rising eighth graders to um, the high school called Rising Red Raider Week. Um, our eighth graders will have the opportunity to get to know the Fitchburg High School staff and um, expectations for freshman year. Um, there'll be teacher and student-led activities happening that week. Um, and then some choices for students in the afternoon uh, include uh, Todd Goodwin's storytelling, uh, birds of prey, painting, pottery place, from pottery place, tie-dye, and um, some different pickup basketball games and other activities in the afternoon. And that's a sample uh, kind of day um, that a middle school student will be experiencing. And then Eva, I'm going to turn it yep. over to you for high school. Great. So at the high school, uh, we have a couple of coordinators. Kathleen Heitman is really uh, looking at providing enrichment activities as well as some uh, academic and guidance support. And Steve Lowney is in charge of our credit recovery courses, which this year are at no cost to the students at all. So uh, if you, so they're offering, there's 126 students interested in the um, academic and um, enrichment activities. And what she has, and I couldn't put this in the slide, but it's a whole calendar and every day there are different activities planned. So here's just like a sampling of what's planned on any given day. So students will get a copy of the schedule and then they get to pick which days they're going to go in and participate in the program. Um, Kathy's also working with um, Mass Hire of North Central Workforce for, Force Board to provide the students some opportunities to earn some money. So maybe some of the mural making, students will be able to earn money if they do the mural at the school. Uh, potentially earning some money to do some building maintenance or carpentry work at the school. So that's all in the works now. Students have to apply for that and she just sent out the information today to students. Um, 
And if you go to the next slide, um, there's also, I'm sorry, camp counselors that are gonna go down to the eighth grade to the middle school and work with the middle school students. So anyone at the high school that's interested in doing that, they may be able to be paid to do that. Um, and then Steve Lowney um, and the rising ninth graders. I think Mr. Thompson already talked about that, how the eighth graders in the middle school program will be able to go up to the high school for a week um, and they're also going to the Wu Sox game on the 20th with the rest of the district. So, and currently we have 23 students signed up for credit recovery courses. Here's, um, these are the courses currently being offered, but we'll be responding to student um, interest and participation throughout the summer. And I think that was it, right, Eva? Yep. So just Unless there's any questions. One thing I wanted to mention, um, in addition to our summer programming, we also have a number of different um, ELA reading and writing activities in addition to math activities on our website. Uh, we have math calendars where kids can actually click on and do an activity each day, um, in addition to a um, long list of um, different books that students um, are able to um, you know, read and participate in over the summer recommended reading lists for all grade levels. So those are all available on our district website. Any questions about summer? Um, just a comment, the building maintenance. Um, tell us about that. Mr. Stevens and I really want to know. And yes. Ms. LaBelle Pierce, we really want to know. How, building how that's going to work? Is yeah. Right. How we're going how to, we're gonna to clean? Yeah, what, what, what? <laughs> well, well, Kathy's collaborate, Kathy Heitman collaborating with the maintenance and um, again, mass hire to see how we could use some students to learn about, you know, different careers throughout, you know, either building, fixing, uh, maintaining buildings throughout um, the district. So, um, I don't have a lot of details about it. <laughs> She's really Eva, Craig, Craig does. Craig's sitting right next oh, to me. Craig, and he's going to be able to chime in. Craig, Craig, you want to talk a little bit about? I really don't have a lot of detail <laughs> on how they're going to expose the students to that. But what, what we are coordinating our efforts at Fitchburg High School and the other schools to make sure that we are able to appropriately clean uh, all the buildings in lieu of having um, you know summer school ex extensive summer schools throughout the, the entire district. Uh, as far as incorporating part of this into the Fitchburg High School program, I'm sure we'll be working with um, Mr. Richardson and Mr. Kasparian to provide some opportunities who have you know, great experience in, in how this could be a career pathway for, for many of our students and the mechanical pieces behind running a building and maintaining it and, and all the important um, mechanical structures of the facilities. So I'm, um, we're away for part of July, but we are around the last week of August and the first week of, uh, first and second week of the program. Um, I would love to come on that. I would love to, to see and support and, and take photos of the kids because the, the buildings are, are such a huge part of the schools. And you know, we did have students doing student maintenance for the first you know, many decades of Fitchburg schools, uh, Mayor Lowe, was the person who stoked the fire at his, you know, grammar school. He was mayor in 1910. So his reminiscences have that. So we have a tradition of students taking care of buildings. Um, so, but I'm thrilled to hear this. This is amazing. So I've said in the past, this is going to be a summer like uh, no other we've ever experienced. Um, so it'll be all hands on deck, thinking out of the box and making sure that we're able to get our buildings maintained on a regular basis just for our summer schools and then in preparation for the beginning of next school year, so. Excellent. Great. Okay, thank you, Ms. Thompson and Mr. Um, I had thank one you. last item listed under superintendent's report tonight, uh, an update on the school year 21-22 calendar. I'm tabling that update uh, until another meeting. Uh, we may need to have a meeting before the first uh, scheduled school committee meeting in September. I will uh, keep you all apprised of that need. Uh, lastly, we have really just a couple items under budget from donations and some grants. So, Mr. Schalpo, if you can just. Thank you, Mr. Jokla. As Mr. Stevens had alluded to earlier, we have one item for to be accepted as a donation. This is from the Lemister Walmart. It was a pallet of hand sanitizer, over 1,500 pieces at an estimated value of 
roughly $3,500, and that will be distributed out to the individual buildings. And because they are the smaller individual size, they would be excellent that Mr. Antossi could use them in the fall to provide them to all of our student athletes or even to students that they could be appropriate to keep them in their bags. Um, we have a number of grants to be submitted. We have the Accelerated Math Instruction for Students grant of $93,000. Uh, and that's to provide students with access to digital conceptual math programs in K through eight. Um, and also to be submitted, we have our annual submission of all our title federal grants, and these are estimated values. These are not exact amounts that are out. Title one, $2.3 million. Title 2A, $265,000. Title three, $142,000. Title four, 180,000, 21st century, 553,000. Our public law 94142 um, grant for $1.6 million, special education early childhood grant, 47,000, and our Perkins grant for 32,000. Again, those are estimated values for those annual federal grants. And we have one grant to be accepted, and as was mentioned earlier, we're very excited to have uh, the 21st century in the district at McKay, and that's a grant of $155,000. Okay, do we want to, what is the wish of the committee to bundle 21-82 up through and including 21-85? Motion right. to bundle. Second. Second. Motion made to bundle, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, it is unanimous, thank you. Next vote on bundling 21-82 up through and including 21-85. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It is unanimous, thank you. Uh, no need for executive session at this time. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. So Motion moved. made, seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you, we are adjourned.